President Obama rejected the final approval for the Dakota Access Pipeline. We have some video here from Jordan of uh, TYT Politics. Let's check it out. Irregardless, because they are going to pay the fine. Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics here at Osheti Sukhoi Camp, and uh, it's a beautiful night. Uh, President Obama has uh, denied the final easement uh, that would be needed to uh, complete this pipeline. And you had one of the uh, kind of like historic uh, images from here, and you've been fighting this along with your other indigenous uh, tribes members and non-natives. Talk about uh, what today means. Was this something uh, akin to, you know, prayers being answered? Uh, what, do you, what does today mean to you? Exactly. This is exactly what that means. We've been here in a prayerful way, peaceful way. All the atrocities that we faced, we still remain peaceful. We still remain prayerful. And, and to see the support from the people coming in as a result is really amazing. And the, the amount of support nationwide as well worldwide that has come in is truly beautiful. My first thoughts are like, whoa, finally, finally he's, 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 he's listening to some sort of reason. Um, we did kill the black snake. And this is the power of the people. This is the power of the people. This is the power of prayer. So, I mean, they're still going to try some kind of way. There'll be all kinds of litigation. The tribes still have their lawsuits. Uh, Standing Rock, Cheyenne River, uh, Yankton still have lawsuits. I'm sure uh, Energy Council will try to do something. Um, but effectively, you know, the investors will start pulling out. It's dead. Yeah. Um... So I think that, if anything, this is being undersold. That wasn't the power of prayer. That was the power of the people. That was the power of endless, non-stop struggle and protest. Because that's what it's been. I mean, people have been there for a while now. Just every day, getting out there and protesting, and protesting peacefully. And just recently, we learned that about 2,000 veterans were going there, and they were going to protect the protesters. The water protectors, as they're calling themselves. Uh, Mike Laywood Jr. was uh, one of them. Wes Clark Jr. is another one. I know TYT was involved in uh, basically organizing this and, and getting a bunch of people out there. And here's the thing, man. when you, It's one thing when you have protesters who are doing what they're doing, which is great, but it's hard to get media coverage when you're just some protesters. When you have veterans step up and say, hey, what we're going to do is protect against enemies foreign and domestic. And this oil company's a domestic enemy. Well, then the media starts to wake up a little bit. And they go, oh, that's interesting. So now we're in a position where to argue against the protesters means arguing against the veterans as well. And who's on the other side? You got some police from, from South Dakota, and you got oil police so it's oil companies versus veterans. Hmm, what side are you going to take? Which side is law and order, by the way? Serious question. Which side is law and order, especially now that Obama's like, it's not approved, and they were ready to go, man. They were ready to keep building. So by my reading of the situation, it's actually very similar to what the, the situation was uh, back during segregation, when you had, like, the local police who were disobeying the orders of the federal government. Are you, is that what's going to happen here? You're going to disobey the orders of the federal government and you're going to stand up against the veterans? What's that thing Republicans say again about supporting the troops? I don't remember what it was. Maybe you guys can enlighten me on that. Um, this is actually a, a, an awesome win. And it does feel like one of the first times ever that Native people, Native Americans, Indigenous people, they actually stood up and won. They won. <laughs> Usually they get railroaded. And that was another thing about this whole incident that really rubbed me the wrong way is as I looked at it, it was like, it was almost like they were trying to fuck over Native Americans once more and just kind of keep it on the low and just get get it through. Like, all right, just get the pipeline through. And again, why, why is this a big issue? Well, it's a big issue, not just because it's a pipeline and it increases pollution and adds global warming. And we got to go in the other direction and all that stuff, which is true. And it's a concern but it's going through their fucking water source. And there are real, genuine, legit concerns about, no, you're... 
you're going to do a similar thing like we've seen around the country with fracking. How they do fracking in certain areas and then there are the famous videos online. People turn around their water and lighting their water on fire. Because they say it's safe, but it's not that safe. You're contaminating the water supply and screwing people over. Unless you think, well, come on, I mean, these pipelines, aren't they at a point where they're safe enough? Uh, no, there was a pipeline that just exploded recently while there was protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Another pipeline exploded somewhere in the country. So let me get this straight. You're going to go over their land when they're specifically not giving you permission. So you're going to go over their land. You're going to put their water supply at risk. And it happens to be another example of screwing over of Native Americans who I think have had it bad enough. Yeah, how about a big fat no to that? So credit to President Obama for denying the final easement on this, which was needed in order to approve it. And I guess this is a similar thing where with Keystone XL, people were a little surprised. Like, oh, did he just block Keystone XL? But I think the really scary thing is what's going to happen with President Trump. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that ain't good. That ain't good. At least with Hillary Clinton, there was a chance that since if Obama laid the groundwork and set the precedent of, no, we're against this one. I mean, it'd be a bold move for her to do an about face after saying, I want to continue Obama's legacy, do an about face and say, no, we're going to go ahead and approve that and we're going to try it. Trump? I don't think there's any, I think he wants to do it. It's just a matter of, are they going to be, are there going to be enough investors at that time and all the other logistical issues now that'll go hand in hand with it. But either way, man, it, it was, it's a good moment and it's, it's not the power of prayer, it's the power of people. It's the power of hard work, you know? I mean, they, you guys are entitled to believe whatever you want to believe and do your thing, you know, if you're out there and you're protesting and, and you're doing all the groundwork. But I'm just letting you know it was the groundwork that did it. It was the fact that you were fucking relentless and you're out there getting hit by water cannons in weather that's, what, uh, below freezing? They're hitting you with water cannons and it's below freezing. And you're still out there. That makes you fucking heroes. Because you achieved your goal and you never gave up.